Hello and welcome to day two of the 32nd Diggers and Dealers. Uh, Canaccord Genuity is delighted to continue its association with this wonderful mining forum. I'm Paul Howard, I'm a mining analyst at Canaccord and I'm based in Perth. I'm delighted to see quite a few uh, smiling faces in the audience this morning, so thanks for coming up guys. Um, I'm delighted to chair this session and introduce six exciting presentations from explorers and producers of a number of commodities and metals. So first up, we have Amanda Lacaz, Managing Director and CEO of Linus Rare Earths. Amanda previously held roles in marketing and has worked for large telcos and communications businesses. She spent the last 10 years running Linus Rare Earths, and among a number of qualifications, I note that Amanda has a diploma in music. I've since found out that this is specifically in piano, but she also plays the flute and the violin. And Amanda even co-wrote a musical about the comic book hero, The Phantom. So please welcome Amanda to the stage. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, everybody. No purple tights today, although I was greeted this morning with, oh, hello, it's Barbie Corp. Um, however, I have not seen the Barbie ad, but I am assured that it really is a feminist um, um, story, so I'm delighted with that. And for all the women in the audience, you can dress like Barbie and be a success. Um, and I know that Jake Klein from Evolution Mining will be very pleased about that. He told me he was speaking at Diversity Breakfast this morning and he was going to say just how great it was that we were such a diverse industry. Um, but first of all, I would like to um, acknowledge country and as I do that, to thank Lyndon Brownlee for his very generous welcome to country yesterday. Like Lyndon, I am a true believer in the importance of action, um, in the value of work. Um, my kids are probably sick of me saying hard work is its own reward, and the benefits of change. And with Lyndon at Linus, we do say yes to partnerships, yes to respect, and yes to change. And I am incredibly proud every time I hear about the success stories that Lyndon shared with us. Um, it's always a delight to be here at Diggers um, with investors and, and colleagues who are passionate about the mining industry. Um, and I'm sad that this year we're missing Elizabeth Gaines and her Diggers and Dealers Diversity Index. However, in her absence, Jake, I can tell you that we continue to have more Andrews more Tonys, more Marks, more Matthews, and more Lukes, but maybe not more Jakes, presenting than we do women. In fact, we've really nailed it this year, there's two of us. Um, so, uh, but it's not necessarily an accurate reflection of what's going on. And whilst I'm teasing my old friend here, um, we are seeing a lot more women in industry and a lot more diversity, also not just in terms of gender, but in terms of ethnicity and um, industry experience and otherwise. And I think that's very good for our industry. Um, the ABC's Jared Lucas pointed out on Sunday that we have more critical minerals companies presenting this year than gold companies, or as mining's friend Brad Thompson in the um, uh, AFR says, D&D &D has returned to its roots with a focus on exploration and development. And that probably reflects the fact that our industry is you know, moving into the next stage where our prosperity will depend on with whether we are successful and effective in developing the so-called critical minerals. And the combined value today of the 33 major ASX listed critical mineral stocks is now more valuable than the 25 companies in the S&P ASX All Ordinaries Gold Index. Of course, we're here in the Goldfields region. Gold is and will continue to be an important contributor and employer in the region. However, I think Kargouli Mayor John Bowler got it right when he said that critical minerals can be the next gold for Kalgoorlie, not instead of, but in addition to. And we are excited to be part of the Goldfields, our Mount Weld mine is near Laverton, and of course our new rare earth processing facility is just 10 minutes from where we are now. 
As an industry, we do, however, need to think very much about some of the challenges, and these include things like infrastructure and the economics of doing business in Australia, as governments put out successive press releases on the importance of value adding, with occasional action to follow. Um, but workforce is something of a challenge for us because our next generation are not enrolling in mining specific fields, not at a degree, um, a diploma or even certificate level. Those of you in WA may not see this, you know, WA is still the mining town of the globe, but mining's reputation is not so good elsewhere. I think we could keep our fingers crossed that the next generation will reach a stage where they work out that someone has to pay the bills as the boomers exit the workforce, or we could address the reasons that they think they don't want to work in mining. I often hear that young people want jobs with purpose. I think our message has to be that in a world which is dominated by feelings and likes and smiley face, poo faced, winking and sleeping emojis, um, the minerals industry actually has purpose. Mining matters. Without the minerals we mine and process, none of us can live the lifestyles we desire and we cannot meet the challenge of reducing the devastating effect we humans are having on the planet. And if our younger generations want to do work with purpose, then they can find that in the mining industry. Government services cannot be delivered without funding, without the contribution of the Australian mining industry. We contribute almost 10% over, over, almost of GDP, support over 1.1 million jobs, with an average salary of $144,000 a year. Why would you, you know, ride a bike for Uber Eats when you could work in the mining industry? I wonder. Um, and we pay $39 billion in company tax and $24 billion in royalties. And I'm going to repeat something I said at last year's dinner, which is that Australia used to ride on the sheep's back and today it stands on the digger's shoulders. I'm repeating it because every single one of us in this industry should say it, say it often and say it very loud because we are not given the acknowledgement and the recognition of the contribution that we make and will continue to make to the Australian economy. So that's the sermon. I'll move on a bit to Linus now. For those of us in the industry, um, we, we are lucky. We have a, an amazing mineral endowment in Australia. And for those of us who work in the industry, it is our duty to treat this gift with respect to mine safely, to limit our footprint wherever possible, to care for our people and our communities, and to rehabilitate land at the end of mine life. Of course, we can never be complacent about safety. Um, according to Safe Work Australia, there have been seven deaths in the mining industry in the year to 20 July 2023, and every one of those fatalities is devastating for families, communities, their colleagues in the workplace and the industry. So at Linus, of course, like all of you, we prioritise safety for our people, our communities and the environment. And I, I have to say I'm really disappointed that we've reported three LTIs in the last quarter, which sees us actually significantly stepping up our ac actions in this area. With respect to environment, we are proud of our track record. We have never been involved in an incident resulting in harm to public health or the environment, and that reflects the strength of our policies and processes. We work with selected partners to provide mine to magnet traceability. We conduct life cycle assessments and we participate in external sustainability and verification initiatives. Um, and because we're in Kalgoorlie, I'll talk about one of those. In March this year, we announced a three-year partnership with the Goldfields' premier community environmental organisation, the Kalgoorlie Boulder Urban Land Care Group. And the acronym is very difficult. It's KBOLG. But anyway, KBOLG are busily growing seedlings for the revegetation of our Kalgoorlie site 
in conjunction with our Enviro Christi body coat. And we will continue to seek Cable's expertise in rehabilitation and revegetation for both of our goldfields operations. Um, we've had a couple of really standout years in uh, the rare earth market. Demand has been strong, growth has been strong, price has been strong. It's sort of like the trifecta, hey? Um, and it, it makes it, um, it, it it's, it's like, yeah, rare earth's a bit like having babies. You remember the first time they smiled at you, but you don't remember all the nights they howled. And so after my last two years of, you know, this wonderful trifecta, I'm, I'm not remembering quite much, so much the pain of 2016 and 2017. Um, but nonetheless, we've had a very, very good couple of years. Um, just recently, the market softened a little, uh, and I'm sure many people have talked about some of the challenges in China. And um, we are seeing lower market prices at present. But we see many of these trends as relatively short-lived and expect that in the medium term, market pricing will return to a more normalised level. And we certainly recognise the importance of building the outside China uh, rare earth industry. It's critical for our success and believe that now is the ideal time to be investing in our growth projects to meet growing demand for rare earths. And for us, that means we have a lot of very big projects on at present. So, like every other miner here, our value starts under the ground at Mount Weld. Unlike every other miner here, we truly do have very high-grade material. <laughs> so, please just enjoy that on that slide. Uh, in the June quarter, we reported record concentrate production at Mount Weld, and we are continuing our exploration program in the fresh carbonatite below the current Mount Weld life of mine design and ore reserve. Um, this gives you a sense, and actually, um, our head of geology, Marcel, is here. You should all come and talk to her if you want more detail but it gives you a sense of really what we're looking at in terms of exploration here, and also <coughs> why Mount Weld is such a wonderful resource, because it's a collapsed volcano, so it's like someone's put a cookie jar in the, in the earth and then they've just thrown all these goodies in. And so we're dutifully, you know, sort of uh, extracting them um, carefully and sustainably. Um, Reverse circulation drilling has commenced in 97 holes, that's 17,432 metres, have been completed to date. We've lodged a new life of mine proposal for Mount Weld, um, which even though it significantly expands our footprint, it's still a tiny baby little operation compared to um, many of those here today. It includes further development of the ore body and investment in processing cap capability. And in March, our expansion project received formal approval for minor and preliminary works. I'm delighted to say it is um, progressing as planned. For those of you who've been to Mount Weld, you will see from this aerial photo that we're starting to look like really a, a mine site, you know, rather than a pilot plant. And it is really very exciting as we're, <coughs> excuse me, looking to, to further develop this. Fabricated steel, steel mold modules are being delivered to site. We've got the proposals for our renewable um, power station. And um, actually, it was great. We just got a further $20 million grant from the Australian government to develop our new process for um, processing our appetite rituals. Of course, the question which is on most people's lips is, well, what's going on in Kalgoorlie? Well, this is what's going on in Kalgoorlie. So we are in the final commissioning stage for our rare earth processing facility here. Um, and the only major area still required for first production, which remains under final construction, is at the waste gas treatment plant. But we've moved through to stage four commissioning of our chemical and wet circuits. We've used our rare earth carbonate from Linus Malaysia. We've got chemicals on site. Um, we've got first delivery of concentrate. 
we've got our major earthworks have been completed, we've got on-site gas supply, in fact we have everything ready to go um, and Chris Jenny down here looks after our major projects so you should go and ask him why on earth he hasn't completed the waste gas treatment plant. <laughs> And why is he sitting in this audience instead of being out with a spanner in his hand? No. Um, the team is working very hard on getting this through and it is really important to remember that they have done a remarkable job. Um, we had final approvals for the Kalgoorlie facility in February last year. The fact that we are now at stage four commissioning um, you know, less than 18 months later, I think is quite remarkable. So just let me show you the time lapse. This is a big, beautiful plant um, and we are really proud of it and looking forward to getting first feed on and first production within the next month. So the material that we produce here will go up to Malaysia um, and I, I'd like to acknowledge that in June our team in Malaysia delivered the highest ever quarterly production of NDPR at 1,864 tonnes. It's our second consecutive record of um, a quarter of record production. Um, they really have that asset running um, like clockwork. But you know, we have also had to make investments there to receive the um, mixed rare earth carbonate that will be produced here from Kalgoorlie. Um, and this just shows you an aerial photo of that. And then once our US facility is operation, operational, we will establish a direct um, MREC supply chain from the Kalgoorlie rare earth processing facility to our US rare earth platform. And of course, that was our exciting news from last week. We've now signed an updated contract with the United States Department of Defense for our US heavy rare earth plant. It's an expenditure-based contract under which all of Linus's properly allocable construction costs will be reimbursed, which means all reasonable and necessary costs incurred in the construction. The contribution by the US government uh, of approximately 250 million, 258 million is currently allocated to the project. The heavy rare earth plant will be the foundation plant, will be co-located with and share non-process infrastructure with our light rare earth plant. It will be the first of its kind outside Australia and as the only scale producer of separated rare earths outside of China, our expert our expertise makes us the ideal partner for the DOD. We've bought a site in Sea Drift, Texas in Calhoun County. I won't say yeehaw. Uh, but it's, uh, I, I went to visit there as part of our due diligence in the site selection process and we are really very excited. We have, we have a close proximity to a skilled workforce. We're in a, an existing heavy industrial zone and we really look forward to getting to know the community and working to create advanced manufacturing jobs and economic opportunities for local people. So just turning for a moment to the S in ESG, at Linus we really do understand that we have a duty to make a positive contribution to the communities where we live and work. Um, that means economic development by employing local people and buying from local businesses, but we also provide direct support in um, a number of target areas including health and wellbeing, education and training, the environment and just support for vulnerable community members. This year we launched our first reconciliation plan, action plan, and that marks the beginning of our reconciliation journey and outlines 
the actions we will take to strengthen our ties with our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander members of our communities. And you can see some photos here of our team embracing these opportunities to understand and appreciate Aboriginal culture during NAIDOC week. We had our first ever Western Australian International Women's Day event here at the Kalgoorlie Town Hall. Um, we've been having them for um, many years in Malaysia. In Malaysia, we now have um, about uh, 200 people actually attending that event. This time we had 75 here in Kalgoorlie, that's members of our team and the Goldfields community. And a good time was had by all. It was so funny. One of our guys, uh, we had a few men who were allowed at this event, and one of them sort of said to me afterwards, he said, mmm, because there were only like four or five of them, and he said, Actually, I felt a bit uncomfortable, you know, just being in such a minority. And I'm like, yeah, welcome to my world. Um, so as I look around at the explorers and developers in the critical minerals space, it can be easy to forget that Linus is still a young company. We have been in production for about a decade and in that time we have been faced with just about every challenge that could be thrown at us. I'm sure that many of our junior explorers and developers in attendance here will face the same challenges. My advice to you is do what is right. Listen to your people and meet each challenge as an opportunity to get better. And whilst there will be days where you wonder if it's all worth it, I'm happy to stand here as proof that it is. Thank you very much, Amanda. I'm afraid we're out of time for questions.